Today, we're gonna be talking about rediscovering your body as a That's okay. <laughs> as a ground for your spiritual path, okay. Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Rediscovering your body is a ground for your spiritual path. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting topic about how to rediscover your body as a ground to your spiritual path. And we're welcoming one of our new meditation facilitators, Anna Liz, um, with us today. Now, she's a certified meditation and mindfulness teacher. She's an artist. She spe specializes in somatic um, somatic healing. Somatic mindfulness, yeah. Uh, yeah, and also expressive arts. And yeah. so, you know, so many different things there, a lot of things that maybe people know or can kind of grasp uh, an idea of, but I wanna get into details of all of those different modalities that you offer. And I know that we'll be looking at the body, you know? And so it's, it's interesting for me because when I think of mindfulness, I think all in the mind, but you're bringing how the mindfulness in the body affects this path for spiritual. So yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for this introduction. Um, yes, um, like you were saying, um, especially here um, in the US, we tend to, to connect mindfulness with something very mental. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, I feel like, um, look for a meditation practice to deal with symptoms of some underlying issues. Yeah. And we not always um, <laughs> look into these underlying issues. Um, and to work with the underlying issues, I, I believe that we need to turn to the body and we need to reconnect to this um, this body that houses um, our being in this planet. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I, I'm very I, passionate about that. I like that. Yeah, and you're right. You know, most of the time when people say, you know, a meditation practice, a mindfulness practice, it's all about calming the mind. Yeah. Very, very literally, right? You know, yes. um, but, in, and you can work on that. And, and as a hypnotherapist, you know, I always say like, it's not necessarily the presenting issue that's ever the thing that needs to be worked on. It's, right. it's what is the causality that is having, you know, in this case, that's having the mind go a little chaotic. It's having the stress, it's having that need to seek peace or mindfulness, right? right. And so in your finding, it comes from the body. Yeah. So it. it the body holds all, all of our, our um, life experiences, all of our, tra our trauma. Um, I am particularly very interested in trauma um, for from for personal reasons. That's how I discovered both the expressive arts and mindfulness. Okay. Um, although uh, in the very beginning, I didn't understand that that's what I was doing. Um, <laughs> okay, so I, let me hear your story. Okay. What, 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 what happened? I yeah, mean, we, like, we, we don't have to get there. into all the trauma trauma, but a little bit about, you know, maybe some things that were happening in your life or some things that you had to overcome and then why yeah, did definitely. you seek the path? Definitely, I feel like it's important also for us to talk openly about it. Um, I don't think everybody is um, ready to just jump into a conversation about their own trauma. Um, part of what we do with um, somatic mindfulness is really um, recovering this sense of safety in the body so that at some point I'm able to, to explore um, th that issue and, and what's, what's being um, causing in, for me, um, both physically, emotionally, um, okay. mentally. Um, in my case, since I've been uh, working with it for a while, I feel safe enough to share, and I think it's important for the ones of us who are in this. Um, Sorry <laughs> about him. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I love it. Um, eat, baby. <laughs> I just want to stop and like. Um, <laughs> he's he's it's like <laughs> soaking up all the energy. Yeah, it's so cute. Um, so. And, and I do think that, that you know, I didn't want to put you on the spot and be like, all right, yes. you know, here we are, we're meeting each other and let's say, talk about your trauma. But it is, it's it's something that I think if, if people realize that more and more people have had similar, maybe different, but yet similar emotional or physical 
、uh, mental reactions to things that have caused them, yes, you know, trauma.、Yeah. You know, it's not you know trauma to each person. It can be something different, right? Yeah, you know,、exactly. it, it's it's an interpretation of an event, and it's something that causes you know, in most cases, harm, right? Right, exactly. And it's, it, it's anything that it's a lot for your nervous system, yeah, for you to deal with, yeah, and, and so then it overloads. And you go into that fight or flight. You go into shock, and you、exactly. go into detachment. You know. And I think if more and more people find that normalcy in, not that it's we want to ever say,、uh, let's make it okay for people to experience trauma, but that if more and more people realize that so many people have、yeah. had their version of it, that maybe that can bring that to the surface so people can. Have the, take those steps to heal. Yes, exactly, and and understand the vocabulary that we need in order to talk about it. Like,、um, learn the vocabulary and learn how to relate to it. Because, like I said, I didn't even realize I had experienced trauma because it's not something that I、uh, grew up、um, listening about or、um, I wasn't introduced to the concept. Yeah, and we always think about trauma as like this big event, like a, a car accident or. You know, so or like, a rape I'm, I'm, or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Something that puts your life、um, in danger in that moment.、Yeah. Um, but it could be something that that happened regularly for years as、uh, in your, you know, as you're growing up. Which, well, in my case, I had a, a big、um, traumatic event happen to me when I was、um, one year old. Okay.、Um, both my biological parents died. In an accident, and I was raised by my father's family.、Okay. So I was basically taken、um, away from my mother's, my biological mother's side of the family, and、um, I had good people around me growing up. But just that one、um, rupture really causes a lot of、um, stress. Yeah. In your body, in your physiology, in your、um, for a baby, you know, nothing is、yeah. really formed yet.、Um, and we talked openly in my family about that,、mm-hmm. but still, it's not like something that I consciously went into to process at any point. Yeah, well,、until. and you were so young too, so it, it was almost like normal for exactly. you. Exactly, exactly, it was normal. I normalized like like we do. And that was followed by、um, an attachment to my primary caregiver、um, that was very unsafe and and insecure. And、mm-hmm. like I said, you know, it's、uh, that that trauma that happens constantly in sometimes more subtle ways and sometimes more very,、uh, very drastic ways. Yeah, and exactly, and it can happen both. I think that's important to really. You know, kind of highlight even on a larger level. I know that you just said it, but like to repeat it because it's so profound for people to get that trauma isn't. There is trauma that is this isolated experience、yes. of immediate、um, danger and pain and abuse or whatever that might be. You know,、uh, but there is these environments that people、yes. can be in. That they're operating, but they're so on edge, yes, right? You、exactly. know, maybe people grow up in、um, an alcoholic or addict household, and they don't ever know what they're gonna get, or、yeah. or they're in a relatively verbal. F- Abusive relationship, not even just physically abusive, but then there's the physical and that. Of course, people say that that's trauma situation, but people don't realize that the verbal abuse or even just, you know, work situations that、right. cause very much a level of toxicity that that nervous system is constantly on guard. These are all levels、right. and expressions of trauma. People、right. can go through these periods and they're just, you know, and they don't even realize until they're after it. Yeah, like you, they're experiencing and and. and They're like, why am I having these weird reactions? Why am I ha- having these feelings? But it's a you, you have to sometimes get out of it in order to realize、right. what you were in. Right, and uh, even um, you know you can grow up with someone who's experiencing、um, a mental、um, health issue and that that hasn't been addressed,、mm-hmm. um, and that's also traumatic. Yeah,、um, especially for for a child having to learn how to deal with that without really having any any understanding of what that is and. Having that adult who needed to be their 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 
um, their safety be be what's causing them um, the unsafety, be what's causing them um, to never know what they're gonna find, and it puts it 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 it, um, it teaches ourselves to be very on edge, like you said, and and yeah. sometimes looking for the danger or sometimes. Um, numbing the way numbing the way we feel uh, not to to cause more problems yeah so we learn to disconnect and that's all through we, we disconnect from our bodies we, dis we we don't we don't understand we are either too to and, and both can happen we can be either too much in our in our mental capacities and and completely disconnected from our feelings from our body from our emotions and we can be to relying too much in our feelings as well and our emotions and be disconnected from our mental capacities yeah. so how how is it possible for us to to bring them together so that we can be both thinking and feeling mm -hmm. um, and feeling in the sense of sensing and feeling emotion and understanding what's happening in an integrated way and that's what you found right yes, yes. and so how did you even start to seek that and then what was that path like you know when, when were you like okay something needs to change i want some healing or i want there, there's something on like how did that even come about for you yeah it was it was very um it was not conscious um conscious I, I i didn't consciously look for it in the beginning um but i was experiencing in my own life um i had a, a good life um a life that from the outside looked like there was nothing wrong mm -hmm. um even though you know personally in my in in my close relationships there were things happening um but i did feel a sense of just stuckness and just like being f feeling flat a lot of a lot of times mm. um i didn't realize then that i that i had learned how to completely shut my my emotions off and numb myself not because it wasn't safe for me to express anything it wasn't safe for me um, and if it wasn't safe for me to express the way i feel yeah. or what i think then it's not not safe for me to feel those yeah. things yeah right so i learned not to feel them because that's safe yeah that way i can keep myself moving yeah. forward without danger mm -hmm. um and that that way you can continue to get through right exactly. because otherwise you would be overwhelmed with whatever those emotions were exactly know? so i was experiencing more like of the consequences in my life of um relationships going not the way that i expected them to go uh, of course we can talk about expectations <laughs> yeah. and uh, that's something that also you know a mindfulness practice and uh, also uh, teaches us to to develop a different relationship to um, but yeah, but I wasn't, I, it was just not ideal. And at some point out of just curiosity, I went to, to take um, theater classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a, this absolutely wonderful teacher from Argentina that was back in Brazil. I'm from Brazil originally. Okay. Um, and she was very experimental and her approach was very, very embodied. So okay. we would go inside of us to understand how to to bring those uh, stories to, to life from our own personal experience. And I started connecting again with my body and my emotions. And that was and you're like, just, whoa, what is this? Yes, it was mind blowing, but it was also very addicting. Like I because it's good to feel like we don't realize mm -hmm. because uh, we, we go through so much pain and we get so aware of those uncomfortable feelings mm -hmm. um, and we don't know what to do with them and then we want to shut them off we want to neglect them you know mm -hmm. we want them to go away and we don't realize that we also get shut off from the from Positive. the positive feelings yeah. from the things that are so delicious to feel yeah right because uh -huh. your emotional spectrum works like i call it like a little pac-man if there's the you know if this is the neutral line you got a little Pac-Man, you start cutting off the negative, you also simultaneously right. cut off the positive. They I love that. Beep, yes. beep, <laughs> beep, 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 exactly. You know? And then so, you're just here. Yeah, and then you're just, just in the little, little middle. Right, exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, of course, then we can go into... Um, so you, so you started doing these these classes yes. and which I think a lot of the performance arts classes and the different techniques that uh, people do in acting classes and performance arts classes, they're so therapeutic. Yes. You know, people don't realize that that's like the first 
kind of like step in, in in this discovery of yourself like in order to play another you have to know yourself right, right exactly, you know exactly, and so really super is. healing and then from there where did you get into from mind? there i was i was always very interested in yoga so that was already in my life so okay with and i was kind of i say playing around with meditation because at that point i wasn't really like oh i'm gonna have a meditation practice i, I had my yoga you were doing practice, you were yes. doing the satna at the end of yoga <laughs> yes, yeah exactly i was younger too you know that was like my early 20s um i'm 34 so okay oh, yoga, yeah. um and i was always interested in all the metaphysical things and healing um, without re really realizing that I, I personally needed it. But um, at some point, a dear friend of mine um, went to a Vipassana retreat. Okay. Um, completely changed his life. And he said, you know, maybe you will, maybe you will like to go. And I was in Brazil and I, I didn't have um, a lot to do there. It was like in, in between. I, I, I had moved here and then I had to go back to Brazil. So I was there kind of like... Yeah. dealing with feelings of I don't want to be here resistance and I said maybe this would be good for me and I went to the retreat and it's a silent retreat 10 the days 10 day one. Ordeal. yeah, yeah. Um, you don't communicate with anyone else <laughs> you don't have phone you don't have a book you don't have a notebook you don't look at other people you eat around other people but you're not looking at them um you're really, you're really in the present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was also very, very um, eye-opening, enlightening. And, and I say, I don't say enlightening in the sense of, oh, I, I, I moved yeah. above. No, enlightening but, and it, it, it was shining a light into my own existence and experience of my reality and how I was, how I was being a part of how my life was going. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I was just completely hooked um, with meditation. And then I came back to Los Angeles, where luckily we have so many amazing options of, you know, learning and, and exploring this. And then I did a lot of um, studying, um, which I continue to do. I think we never, we yeah, never we, end. We never end. end. <laughs> yeah. we and never why end. would you want to? There's so much to keep on exploring. Yeah. Right? And then that together with my background in art, because I've, I've always been an artist, mm -hmm. also had like um, a change, uh, uh, an, an out of way with my art because I went to, to a type of art, art school back in Brazil. And it was, it was supposedly creative, but they had like their models of how things mm. Should be, how I good mean. things are and how and then what is not good and i was pretty good at mimicking the good but in that process i got completely disconnected from self-expression from authentic mm. self self-expression and that's why theater was so amazing because it was authentic um, but in a way it's still if you're not working with your own material it's it's still not working on your stuff you're yeah. you're rediscovering all those feelings and and things but your stories are still locked and, and they are in your body and that's what the expressive arts yeah. give you a way of work of working with your own mater material and in a very gentle way in a very creative way in a way that is very respectful of where you are because everything is coming from you and mm. you you bring things to the outside so you can be in, di in, in dialogue with them and then when you are in dialogue with them you can process a lot of things that you were not able to process before in this safe container now um and 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 i for me my experience is that with the the mindfulness practice as well especially embodied mindfulness that is um looking into you know how how are we perceiving how yeah. uh, reality moment by moment both um, physical emotionally um, mentally so when you put this together is this together you have a way of integrate all this experience and so is that what one of your like classes that you facilitate is kind of incorporating all of that from yes. somatic mindfulness to expressive arts and and regular elements of mindfulness and you're kind of 
doing this hybrid. Yes. So what does that look like? Do you take somebody on like a, like, let, let's just talk to like, uh, like if somebody's like, well, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> like you take these things out of you and you're like, make yes. something with it. It's like, are you working with different types of mediums, like yes. different, like, like crayons and paints and watercolors? Are you working with like, like clay and stuff like that? I mean, like, what is that like? And then what is, um, the process, you know. Yes. So let's let's take take somebody through like a yeah, a so class. If like if somebody's never went, they have no idea what to expect. What would what would you say? Okay, so here at Liberate, <laughs> we're gonna focus on the the part of the uh, body mindfulness. So it's not gonna have. We are not gonna put a lot of um, expressive arts in it. Which well, we should. Yeah, though. We, we can do workshops. We have we need, things outside. We, we can do it. A more time. <laughs> we need a little more time. We need. Th these are gonna be like an hour yeah. classes, and to work with that stuff. Um, you one, need more. It's you amazing need... to work in groups because I strongly believe that one of the most healing things is to be able to be witnessed and to witness. Mm. You know, that's how we heal. We heal when there is someone else um, to validate our experience, to validate our existence, to, to acknowledge that whatever we are going through is okay and yeah. is important. Um, so, yeah, I love working with groups for this is one of the reasons and and just like we were saying before normalizing our experience that this is not just me this is human condition right yeah. so i can i can relax here like i can i i belong yeah and this is very this is a very important feeling that not a lot of us have you know we we keep living in this narrative that we are alone um yeah. and it's it's understandable why but you know like how can we reshape that but anyways to your to your question to answer your question um, I usually start with a meditation practice, okay. um, which can be in stillness and it, it can be a, an active meditation. So what I, in my approach, I like, I like to give, I, I, I say that the nervous system loves choice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that being rigid, especially if we are working with trauma, I don't think that's the most uh, like wise approach because it, things will come up. And if you don't have the choice to 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 you listen panic. to yourself, yes, you can get flustered, and then you can just activate your your triggers. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm always you know very aware to to, to very very um, mindful of telling people like the main thing that we are doing here is learning how to understand what we need. Mm -hmm. So if you are if you are feeling that you need something different than what I am suggesting please go ahead and do that. Um, mm. But it is it is a guided process made of suggestions and not demands. Um, and, I like that. Right, so I will guide you through a mindfulness practice that is focused on the body. So, uh, for example, if it, it's very hard for us to say like how, how I am feeling right now. Like, for example, before starting uh, recording this, I was feeling some anxiety because I'm speaking about my work and that, yeah. you know, so where, where, where am I feeling this? Oh, I feel a little bit on my throat. So how, how is that feeling? Can you, mm. can you identify how you're feeling it? Is it, is it solid? Is it, um, as if it were like tingling? Mm. Is it, um, like open? Is it moving? Is it static? So we start to really pay attention to how it, how it is manifesting physically. Mm. Right? Rather than just, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling anxious. And, yeah. then, you, and then you're there. Yeah, because then like? you're grouping it and you're not identifying where it is, what it is, what, what exactly is that, right? Yes, and how your body is responding to that. And not only responding, but how it, how it is, how it's, it's, it's a starting there. Yeah. Because once we have identified what is happening in the body, then we can work with it. And we can work, going back to the expressive arts, we can work with that in, in movement, we can work in that, uh, with that in visual arts, we can work with that in singing. So for example, if I notice that my throat, my throat is constricted, uh -huh. I could do some uh, vocalizing, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't need to be vocalizing for singers because we are not here to sing well, <laughs> yeah. right? It's therapeutic. Yeah. So it's uh, it's making noises. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's not, I say like, it's not dancing, it's moving. So if you're moving and if you're moving from 
I like that making noises and moving <laughs> it's, right, instead you know? of like making it so like people have so much uh, meaning that they give those type of words like it has to be done perfect or they have to have t- certain exactly. level of talent. So oh, if I'm drawing but I don't know how to draw. Okay, but you can make an image. Mm-hmm. You can put the pen, the pen on the paper and you can create an image. Right? And that's <laughs> like drawing. That. Make right? an image. I love exactly. That. And it, the thing with both the, the mindfulness and, and the arts is it's about the process. We are not trying to get anywhere. Yeah. And if you stay with the process, you will get places. Yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah. And it's, it's, it's engaging the body. So uh, we could start from a, a mindful movement practice that then goes to creative writing um, that is informed by the feelings that were uh, evoked during the movement. Mm-hmm. Or we can go to drawing, which making images, which mm-hmm. also can be um, informed by the feelings that, that you know arose while we were moving. And that that all can be, um, we could start from a drawing, we could start from a piece of creative writing and then move that piece. Um, Yeah, so it's a very dynamic process and it's fun because we don't don't have to be suffering in order to grow, you know? Of course we learn through the pain, but when we are working through our material and things are coming up, it's important that we are enjoying it, you know? So one of the things is, is that you're bringing light and awareness to some of these areas that maybe haven't received any attention or awareness. Yes. So, and then what is the process of transmuting that or shifting that? Right, right. So it's, uh, I say that it's all about the narratives, right? Cool. That we live by. Um, everything that we go through in our lives shapes the way shapes our lenses Mm -hmm. we have lenses like we see the world through our own lenses we can both be looking at the same object if you're sitting there and i'm sitting here you're going to be looking at one side of it i'll be looking at another side of it yeah so it's the same thing two different experiences Mm -hmm. um and we can reshape these experiences We can rewrite these narratives. We can recreate this. So for example, if we are working with our body image um, and we we have a a hard time, you know, um, being comfortable in our bodies because at some point we learn that we don't look the way is the way uh, in a way that is attractive to whoever, to society. Um, how can we work, how can we, once we understand, so it's, there is this stage of understanding that that's the narrative that we are telling ourselves. My body is not beautiful enough. My body is not good enough for mm. someone else to see. And then we can challenge that narrative in a very gentle way. But what is, what is, okay, is it really true? And how, how do we challenge that narrative? For me, the, with the, the work in the body image, for example, is how do I feel in my body? So we can start working with for example like that body part yeah um in in a way that is focused on the feeling rather than how it looks like Mm. right um focusing on the function maybe and if it's like what is the function of a of a body right it's here it's our median through which we experience life it's it allows us to to feel touch it allows us to hear sounds it allows us to perceive light through our eyes so we can see things. It allows mm-hmm. us to smell, to taste. So once I start opening up these senses and connecting with what they are here to do, then maybe I can start reshaping my relationship with my body mm-hmm. because then it's not just about this what appearance. It, right, what it looks like from the outside. It's about my experience that I'm letting in through it. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. Yeah. If this makes sense. No, it, it totally <laughs> makes sense. So, you know, through, through identifying whatever those aspects or blocks in, in this one you gave, it's like the a body image, but it could be the voice, it could be, the, it could be these other traumas that are stored in places. Um, it gives the ability to take that and 
nominalize it right, right? Exactly. And, and take it outside and then you can through that nominalization you can like look at it from different perspectives and different views and you can maybe in that moment see it in a way that you've never seen it before exactly and exactly. then that's it and through that it there's a shift yes that's exactly uh, and that shift can lead to tremendous healing yes empowerment yes choice choice it leads to choice because if I understand that, for example, if I understand that, I'm, that, that I, I walked into this room and I'm feeling this constriction in my voice and maybe my heart is, um, I don't know if I'm b b bumping here and the microphone oh. is. <laughs> okay. Well, then they hear a little beat. The, yeah. That's the heartbeat. Boom, Sorry. Boom, boom. <laughs> and, uh, and my heart's beating fast. I could just panic and say, you know, like, I cannot do this. Yeah. What is the narrative here, right? The narrative is that maybe what I have to say is not good enough, is not mm. worth of being heard, right? So if I am aware that that's the narrative that I am carrying, right, about what I have to offer, about yeah. my own self-worth, my, my value, and that's not, and that's okay because so in, in, in this whole process, we understand, we can understand that the, this narrative, it's not, it's not really true. It's something yeah. that I in interiorized from other, from, from another place, from maybe so I heard someone saying that, maybe someone else taught me that mm -hmm. my feelings are not accepted here. Yeah. My opinions are not accepted here. And that's what I've been carrying with me. And that's what I believe when I walk into a room and I want to say something and my, my heart starts racing and I feel that, like yeah. rush of blood to my head and, and then I get scared. But if I know that that's just the narrative that I'm carrying, I can challenge that. I have choice. I created space yeah. and I have choice and I can say, okay, this is just, I, I, I see what's happening and I can hold it and it's okay. Self-doubt, you're welcome. You can be here with me right now, right? Yeah. But I'm not going to let you control me. You can be uh -huh. here with me but I am stepping away from you and I'm still doing it anyway because what I have to say has value, mm. right? So yeah. I'm not guided anymore by those narratives. It doesn't mean that they are not going to show up anymore. It doesn't mean that our me defense mechanisms are not going to show up anymore. And this is something very important because we, s we talk about healing and it's almost like, oh yeah, once you, you found your issues, you heal from them and they are never going to show up anymore. And it's not that, and that's, I've learned the, the, the hard way to <laughs> yeah. for myself because I'm like, why is this here again, you know? It's just that, another level. I look at it like we're playing a video game. You don't just stop, you like, you know, exactly. it's, it's you, you, the game has higher stakes the next time around, right? The level right. becomes a little bit more complicated. Those fine tunings of awareness need to become sharpened, right? right. You know, the, your diamond, Creating facets. And exactly. We keep on creating more and more facets. Right? Exactly. It never exactly. stops. Exactly. It never stops. It never ends. And we are ch we are constantly changing. We are yeah. changing, right? Our experiences are, are, are shaping us. They they and and as they shape us, you know, our our perspective of of the world of life changes. But there is something very unique to all of us. There is that inner wisdom, that deeper mm -hmm. self. That's that's essential. That's there, and it gets it gets blocked and with uh, layers and layers and layers of protection that are there for a reason. Yeah. They were protecting us from something very real at some point and they were doing their job. But now from where I am now in my life, can I look at them and can I be in dialogue with them so that I can understand if they are still helping me and that, that at that moment that those defense mechanisms come up, that wall starts to build up, I can yeah. see it. I can tape a, take a step back and I have a choice and I can actively bring it down or mm -hmm. I can definitely uh, actively stop it from going up. And sometimes they will go up without us realizing, <laughs> yeah. but you know, it's, but we can still, we can still work with it. We can still then consciously work to put them down again. Yeah. And that's okay, you know, but things will come up again. It's, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah. life. It's whack-a-mole. It, exactly. Exactly. Boom. And yeah, then, and the boom, healing is in the choice. It's in the choice. <laughs> the, yeah. the moment we have choice, there you go. Like you are, you are now a active agent in how your life is unfolding, rather than just being there for whatever is happening to you. And I really like the the perception and the the way that 
in, in this level of mindfulness that you teach that it's about not identifying with it and almost looking at it, you right. know? Like I think so many people, they internalize so much of their things. Like I'm a failure instead of, okay, I had a failure experience, now I can pull myself out of it. But like in these awareness and these strategies that, that you bring forth for people to, you know, try on, yes. it is this level of, okay, this is what this narrative used to be, but it's a narrative, it's not you, right? Yes. And I think that there's something super powerful about that because we are not any of the roles that we're playing. We're, we're so much more than that, but oftentimes we find ourselves so stuck with this perception right. that we form it as an identity when it's just a narrative, like you said. Right. And so, I find that really, really, really powerful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And I agree with you completely. Um, and I think that's one of the big things with, um, well, here we practice a lot of secular mindfulness, but like I said, um, with Vipassana, it comes from, it's a, it's a traditional Buddhist meditation mm -hmm. and um, it's about observing and it's about how can we identify less mm -hmm. and it, it in, in identifying less, understanding what is what what it what is left when I take away all of those, and and okay, so in, in expressive arts you can work with um, and and this I, I'm going through a training right now for uh, in expressive arts therapy, okay. and we it, it's called Tamalpa. It's amazing if you want if anyone wants to look it up Tamal uh, Tamalpa Institute, um, and we work in this in this specific. Um, um, the process that we are going through, we work with different body parts. Okay. Um, and when we were working with the, the head, um, we did this whole exercise on unmasking. And it's just so powerful because you realize that, yes, we, we, one, we do need these masks in our mm -hmm. different, like you said, you know, like we have all different parts of us that we apply in different parts of our lives. Um, but what what is underneath all these masks when I take them out? Hmm. What what is left, right? So when I realize that I am identifying with, and sometimes it's you know identifying with my job way too much, and then I lose my job, and then what do I do? My yeah. world my world is you know crashed. Um, or identifying with another person too much, and this person is not in our lives anymore, and then what do we do? Yeah. So when we when we take away all these ident identifications, what is left? What is there? And I'm posing this more as a question than saying that I have an answer for it, you know, because yeah. it really is, it's a process of seeking that is individual. It's, it's individual for each one of us. So what I do love about my work is that, that although I say I am teaching, I am mostly facilitating a process, facilitating your personal process. Yeah right and i'm here to do it with you to more like be with you while you go through it um than to tell you what to do um it's beautiful right I, I mean everything about that that's been you can really feel that it's the truth even when you were describing the meditation you're like well you got to give people choice right and then their suggestions, right. you know, they're never demands, right? right? You know, so over and over the language that you've used is really giving people an opportunity to say, hey, you're, you know, the main character in your story. I'm exactly. here, I'm your guide. Exactly. And I'll guide you, but it's your adventure yeah. and you choose it, right? Yeah. You know, so yeah, I love that. That's beautiful, that's it, yeah. Because I am the main character in my story. I cannot try to be in yours too, you know? <laughs> yeah. You have your own story and I'm, I'm just here to go along, to like, to be part of it, but not to, to I'm, I'm, I'm day after day working and figuring, and figuring out what is the best for me at this moment. So yeah. I have no, uh, business telling you what's best for you, but I can help you figure it out. I love that. Own, right. And so speaking of that, Anna, where can people find you? Oh, okay. So 
Here at Liberate in Sherman Oaks every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. Starting October 4th, so um, yes. Yeah. Um, and then I have a website. Uh, it's called embodiedcreatures.com. Um, yes, go there, send me a message. And my Instagram is my name, which is a little hard. It's Ana Liz Seregachi. Um, don't yes. worry, we'll put you, put you down there, so <laughs> we'll get the links going, yes. and the links are in the description if you're listening to this on any type of audio uh, platform, and also down below if you're checking it out on YouTube. Uh, and, you know, thank you for being here, no, and thank, thank you, you so for much. sharing, and for those that are listening to this till the end, um, you know, to help people find us is like subscribe all the basics you know like but really it's about commenting too um if you do a comment even if it's a, a thumbs up or an explanation part and something in there helps the algorithm say we love you push it to the top so more people can have this information and maybe be guided to some transformation in their life because that's really what we're all about so thank you and until next time thank bye now you. thank you so much thank Christina. you this was lovely if you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself. Hi everybody, I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chu. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically Liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're gonna see magic everywhere you look. You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is Liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.